So this is Acts chapter 14, the scripture for June 4th. As American Christians, I think we generally get to live a pretty cushy life. We don't need to be tried on the stand for our faith. We can practice our faith in private or in public without receiving the critique of, of the societally dominant religion, for the most part. Um, there are some of us who I'm sure have experienced deep persecution, uh, but, but many of us can easily believe the lie that good Christians are going to be synonymous with good citizens. Cooperating with our American government and aiding its mission seems to be one of the tenets of at least white American Christianity, that, that that's something that good Christians do. While there's occasional overlap between being a good Christian and being a good citizen, we must be clear about our primary calling. Uh, our, our primary calling is, is to Christ, uh, above and against the state, and Paul and Barnabas show this in our passage in Acts 14 today. Paul and Barnabas knew that their arrival in Iconium and Lystra and Derbe uh, could become contentious. In fact, I think that they were willing to become odious to the local government for the sake of spreading the gospel. They were even willing to become enemies uh, to, to the, the, the state and the government in, in the local vicinity. As, as we see, when they're in Lystra and Derby, there are people who come up from Antioch and from Iconium to talk badly about them. So intense was the dislike of the local leaders to Paul and Barnabas. But none of that mattered to them, provided that they were able to share the gospel message, uh, the, the gospel that Jesus Christ died for and rose again for so that other people could hear it. Paul and Barnabas were familiar with, uh, with life under the threat of persecution. And Christianity, at least at this point, didn't question the faith of a person who the government was trying to kill. Because after all, the originator of Christianity, patient zero, Jesus Christ himself, was arrested and condemned by evil men in government. What Paul and Barnabas might not have been prepared for, though, was the initial reception they got in Lystra. Uh, the local crowds here sought to worship them because, the because of the miracle of healing that Paul performed on the man who was born lame. Uh, now, I, I think it's important to note that Paul's miracle here mirrors almost exactly the miracle of Peter uh, when, when he was going up to the temple in Acts chapter 3. And how differently did the Gentiles react than the Jews did to Peter? Uh, you see, not only were they dealing with people who didn't have the, the law and the prophets and the writings and, and weren't as familiar with them in the same way that the Jews were, but they were also dealing with people that just had a very different concept of what God or what their gods were willing and able to do. Uh, navigating different cultures and expectations uh, has been a bit of a struggle, I think, for the church for the last 2,000 years. It doesn't stop with Paul, although the, the introduction of Gentiles into God's people uh, was maybe the first of these growing pains that we see here in Acts. So, uh, as I alluded to before, rabble-rousers come from Iconium and from Antioch, uh, and they try to sabotage Paul's missionary work. And when they do that in Lystra, the people of Lystra demonstrate the truth of the saying that, what you idolize, you will eventually demonize. These folks in Lystra idolized Paul and Barnabas and were willing to worship them, and yet as soon as this bad press comes against Paul and Silas, they end up uh, trying to kill Paul. Um, they, they throw rocks at him and, and, and violently attack him and, and leave him for dead. But somehow, along with his co-laborers, Paul gets back up. Whether this was a miracle of the Holy Spirit or whether uh, the people of Lystra just didn't finish the job quite right, what, what matters is that Paul gets up and continues to spread the good news. Uh, he doesn't say, enough is enough, uh, I need to go get right with the state. No, he, he continues to spread the good news and is willing to continue being an obnoxious odor to those uh, who, who were in power at that time. He helps to make, uh, as well, the churches that he founds self-sufficient and locally managed, partly because he knows his mortality. He won't be there always to lead and to guide. This is also a healthy model of church development. 
Now I wonder, particularly in light of recent events, how do you conflate being a faithful Christian and a faithful American? That's all for Acts chapter 14. Tomorrow, the 5th of June, we'll be looking at Acts chapter 15. May God bless you in your reading of Scripture.